स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay so question number 1 would be what is this can you guess the aircraft this aircraft belongs to a flight training school so what do you see basically what do you observe is this a jet engine aircraft there are four engines are all four engines working how do you know I I can't say <laughs> they are just there. So is it into a dive or a climb? Is this a very very steep climb? No, that's the thing. So here is a four engine jet jet engine airplane airplane with a maximum takeoff weight of one fifty tons and just after takeoff, the pilot establishes this aircraft in a very shallow climbs. Thankfully, with all four engines working. So the aircraft is designed very beautifully aerodynamically, as you can see. So the L by D max, or L by D in climb is 15. This is the L by D in climb with flaps deflected, etc. Each engine generates 75,000 newtons. So so what? This is just a story. Okay. The question is, can you calculate its climb gradient? And to make things easy for you. G will be taken as ten meter per second square. So do it, please. So what is climb gradient? What is the formula for climb gradient? Ah yes. What is climb gradient? How do you calculate it? Let's say. But that is uh, dH by dt. That is rate of climb. That is rate of climb. Yes. What is climb gradient? Ah, how do you calculate in this case? Is there a formula available for climb gradient calculation? Yes or no? Yeah. How do you calculate tan theta in this example? Okay, so with tan theta, so get get me the value. One point three. Okay, anybody else? So for a shallow angle of climb, L equal W cos theta cos theta is equal to one, so L equal to W. So the climb gradient is t minus d upon w, excess thrust by weight. That is climb gradient. So thrust is four into seventy-five thousand newtons. Drag will come from L by d because L equal to w. Now at least do it and give me the answer. If you know the answer, please raise your hand if you know the answer. Yeah. Well, p. So, what is it? Two by two by fifteen cannot be calculated. Point one three three and expressed in percentage thirteen point three three percent. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. Now is it clear? Now the next one is. the next step after getting gradient the next thing is dh by dt so for that we have picked up an aircraft and we got its thrust available and thrust required curve so notice that x axis is true air speed in knots and the y axis is thrust in kilo newtons Okay. The first question is, what kind of engine 
does this aircraft have? It is a jet engine. Why is the jet engine? Thrust available is a constant line. This is not the actual story. Actually, there is a slight change in thrust available. Okay, it goes up and comes down slightly, but in the classroom we take it straight forward. So, here is an engine. This aircraft has three engines and uh, its takeoff weight is 75 tons, 7500 kilograms. Now, one engine out of three has failed and the aircraft goes into a climb. So, the pilot immediately brings the aircraft to a speed at which the power required is minimum. Okay. And we want to know what will be the rate of the climb. So, question number 1, at what speed will be the power required minimum? Yes. Okay. At what speed will be thrust required minimum? Both are equal. So, are you sure that the speed at which power required and thrust required is minimum are same? They are not same. Okay. So, at what condition, how will you get the speed? So, I will make the question easy for you. I think what I will do is just to make it easy for you because, okay. how about making it fly at a speed at which thrust required is minimum. So, first of all, how do you calculate rate of climb? Anyone can speak out please, raise your hand. Yes, what is rate of climb? Access power by weight, how do you calculate? Excess power by weight that means T minus D into V upon W. So, please do it now, you have the data with you and because the rate of climb is normally expressed in feet per minute, feet per second rather than knots, there is a conversion given that 1 knot is equal to 100 feet per minute. So, therefore, the speed at which thrust required is minimum, you can convert that into feet per minute to get the answer in feet per minute because T minus D upon W will cancel, units will be cancelling. Okay. So, now I want the I want the answer of this question in feet per minute. Let us see how soon you can do it. By the way, please note the line that you are seeing horizontal line of thrust available, it is for all engines working, it is n engine. This is not thrust available per engine, this is thrust available from all the engines. Yeah. What is the answer you got? 4 feet per minute. Does it sound reasonable to you? An aircraft with 75,000 kg weight is too low. 4 feet per minute is unacceptable. That is near the ceiling. <laughs> 4 feet per minute. Hmm? 3300. 1200, no, slightly more than 1200. That sounds reasonable. Okay, so let us see. 
let us see the ROC is basically velocity into T minus D by W. So, the thrust available will be two thirds of the total and the drag will be equal to thrust T required because you are flying at a speed at which thrust required is minimum at which and the velocity is given to you. So, the ROC will be 12.667 knots or 1266.7 feet per minute. So, this number is reasonable 1200. Okay. Next question, question number 3. This is regarding turning flight. Okay. So, here is the question. Now, I would request you to note down in your in your uh, notebooks the first part which contains the data because you will need it in the calculation. So, sea level thrust is 2, 4, 5 to 5 Newtons, max takeoff weight is given, wing area is given, its zero lift angle of attack is negative 2.2 and the lift curve slope is 4.6 degrees per radian. What we need to calculate is the radius of a coordinated level turn or steady level turn at 4 g and at that condition the wing incidence is 8 degrees. Then what is the time required for it to turn through 180 degrees? This is because the aircraft has to now come back. It has taken off and gone and then the ATC says oh you forgot something please come back. So, it has to take a 180 degree turn and come back. So, how much time will it need? This time is helpful in planning the operations at the airport. And what would be the thrust required if the drag coefficient at this angle of attack is given as 0 0.055. So, this is a slightly involved question, you will take time to do it. Okay. So, what will be nice if someone can first do not solve the question, just first figure out how you will do. So, for that you first draw the horizontal circle in top view and write down the equations that you need for radius of turn. What is the equation for radius of a turn? V square by root n square minus 1 into g. Okay. So, now what all things are available to you? N is available to you. So, the denominator is known to you. Okay. N is known to you. Now, you need V. You need V. So, how will you get V? Anyone please raise your hand and tell me how do you calculate V? The aircraft is in a coordinated turn at n equal to 4. How do you get V? Yes. Okay. So, let me ask you, how do you calculate CL of the aircraft with the data given? Right. Correct. From the rear lift line. So, that means the net or the effective angle of attack or the absolute angle of attack as it is called will be 8 minus minus 2.2 or 10.2 degrees. Okay. Then So, how do you convert to degrees? 0.3, correct. That is right. So, you convert the lift curve slope into degrees per second, uh, per, per degree, multiply by 10.2, what will you get? Cl. Okay. Then, Hmm? 
हाउ मच विल इट बी करेक्ट तो लिफ्ट विल बी फोर इन टू डब्ल्यू एंड अज्यूमिंग सी लेवल यू सी इन एनी क्वेश्चन इफ नथिंग इज गिवन देन यू एज्यूम सी लेवल एंड इट इज गिवन थ्रस्ट एट सी लेवल सो आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू मैंशन इट एवरी थिंग देर ओके अज्यूम सी लेवल सो वॉट इज रो एट सी लेवल करेक्ट सो यू नो रो एट सी लेवल एस एस इज गिवन सी एल इज कैलकुलेटेड लिफ्ट इज फोर टाइम्स डब्ल्यू सो यू कैन कैलकुलेट वी वेन यू कैलकुलेट वी यू हैव ई स्क्वायर बाय रूट एन स्क्वायर माइनस वन सो यू आर ऑन राइट ट्रैक सो विद दैट यू विल गेट वी ओके होल्ड ऑन होल्ड ऑन लेट्स वी गॉट वी ना हाउ डू यू गेट टाइम रिक्वायर्ड टू टर्न थ्रू वन एटी डिग्रीज So this question should be answered by this particular group. Now they are always answering. So you should answer now. How do you get? So how? Please. Uh, you can calculate omega. That is omega. Ha! How do you calculate omega? Very good. So we know everything. So we get omega. One eighty. so you can get from there how much time it will take okay then the last one is thrust required now that is for this particular group how do you get thrust required it's not level flight it's a flight in the coordinated turn in level flight lift is equal to weight here lift is equal to four times weight it's a steady level coordinated turn yeah but the question is about drag how do you calculate the thrust required so because it is a level turn you cannot allow thrust to fall below the drag it has to match the drag otherwise you will start becoming slow you can't maintain the v okay so what will be the drag How much? No, no, no. That is the thrust that it produces. The maximum thrust at sea level. That is not a thrust required. Yes. That's it. C D is given to you. You know V. So half rho V square S C D is D, and that is equal to T. so now you know the method so now let's get the numbers okay so again we'll follow the same procedure but we will reverse it so the radius will be given by this particular group somebody from here will give the radius of turn you are going to give the time required for turn and you are going to give us the thrust required so for all of that you calculate you have to calculate v v so before you calculate these numbers the first thing we need is the velocity if you get that right then everything will be very straight forward so let's see if anybody can tell me the velocity root of n times w by half rho v half rho s cl Oh, so we need CL before that. Okay. So how much is the CL? Zero point zero point eight one eight. Seems reasonable. In level flight, CL is approximately point three to point four. In turning flight, CL tends to be higher because n n equal to n times W. So CL tends to be a bit higher. So acceptable. Point eight one eight. So, if that is the value of CL, then what is the value of V? So, this is the first step. Second step, which most of you have got so far. Okay. Now, the next step. 
नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज जस्ट वी सो वी विल बी बेसिकली स्क्वेयर रूट ऑफ एन टाइम्स डब्ल्यू डिवाइड बाय हाफ रो एस डब्ल्यू सी एल सो प्लीज कंफर्म दिस नंबर टेल मी इफ यू गेट द सेम नंबर something wrong what is wrong oh yeah sorry that correct 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 you are right it's a mistake in copy paste correct the number is correct but the numerical value is correct this is a mistake in typing out i have to correct it so how much is we don't look at me one i also got that so i am very happy okay that's fine 4 8 4 5 that's okay some people take density as 1.225 1.2256 1.226 that can create a problem cl could be 0.818 or 0.819 okay next step next step is to get the value phi you can also do it as v square by some other formula we have just taken this formula formula so is that what you got radius of turn okay so the next thing was time so for that we need omega so v by r and then 180 degrees will take how much time almost around 10 seconds right 180 by assuming that the turn is constant and it will be because this is a study level turn so the turn rate 10.52 seconds almost 11 seconds so finally the last question was drag okay if there is a mistake please tell me so notice the thrust required is far below the thrust available 